Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yes. 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 You have you just have stepped out into, into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Coach. Hey. How you doing? I'm 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 making it. We know it's tough, but Oh man. That's, you got that's through. What we do. So we do when we dig in. That's right, that's right. Well get some light, get some we get some light. There you go, coach. There you go, there you go, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So what we like to do here on Basketball Heads, you know, give people who had an impact on New York City basketball a chance to tell a story. And with that, you know, comes my man Jamel Powell, the artist, who's, oh man, I think this is one of the best ones that he's drawn up. He got a nice picture for you, coach. I appreciate it, dude. I got a lot of amazing stories. You know, about oh, the history man. of basketball in Brooklyn and the people who impact on it and guys who came before us, the guys still doing it. So Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was just telling everyone. So, you know, what I like to ask everyone who comes on the show is who introduced you to the game? Well, I was a baseball player. I heard about and, that. I heard about that. I heard about that. We definitely, yes. And my, and my friend, my friends would always slip out of practice and go down and sole in the hole and play and leave me up there. <laughs> so I didn't start playing until I was about 13 years old. Right. But once I did, oh, man, it was love, man. You know, uh, the mere fact that we, we, down the soul in the hole, we always had nets on the basket. So mm. always intoxicating to hear the basketball swish through the nets. Man. Right. Oh man. So So is there is, is there a, a particular person who introduced you to the game or you just bumped into it by accident by following your friends? Well, my friend Jerry Niles, you know, he played baseball with me. He was one of the guys slipping down in the hole. So okay, okay. Him and Mike Owens and Rick Niles, all those guys, Clyde Wade, them guys would go down the hole and play. And then later on, I found out that I I was playing baseball with a whole plethora of basketball players. Ralph Abraham, who was all American at St. John's, Bishop Ford, he played on my baseball team. He was a pitcher. Marvin Roberts was a pitcher on 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 my team. So those guys were basketball players and hey, had, had a guy by the name of Nicky Taylor who was a great player who played at uh, Wagner. He played at Franklin K. Lane and Wagner. And he passed away in a car accident on the Interboro. But wow. there's no doubt in my mind, he was next level, man. He was next level. Mm. Nicky Taylor. We called him Leopold when we played baseball because he was the home run king. Okay, okay. So, so at that but, time, who was the best player in your neighborhood? Excuse me? Who was the best player in your neighborhood at the time? The best player? Like who was the top guy? Well, Chink Gaines was, you know, all those guys came and played so in the hole. Chink Gaines was All-American at Lane, at Toledo, I mean, at Seton Hall. He was, he was an amazing player. He was a precursor. His game was like Barkley. He he was just amazing. And my 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 thing and my hope is always to link our young kids with guys who play 
and tell them who they remind me of. And if I could introduce them, that's what I would do. So, yeah, that, that, that would definitely games, be amazing. He had a nephew who played at the University of Georgia, Saouda Games. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, but Chink was, he was, I mean, he was tough. I seen him as a what's kid. What's his name? Chink, his name what's Chink. his name? Chink Games? Chink Games. Seton Hall University. Got you. Still with us, too. Yeah, all right, all right. Us. I want to I want to just be able to write some of these names down because I know a lot of these guys, you know, were before my time, and a lot of people are not talking about them. Um, at least Listen, I'm not hearing about them. The first team to ever win three national basketball championships in a row was Tennessee State. And they had Dick Barnett, John Barnhill. And the point guard from that team was a guy from Thomas Jefferson High School. He took Jeff in 55 to the championship, and then he was at Tennessee State. And they won three straight championships. Wooten and them didn't start their run yet. So they were the first team to win three national championships. Right. So, and uh, Nerland Terran, he was an State? amazing player. You said Tennessee State? Tennessee, one one of, the, one of the things about the game today is guys don't talk about the older guys. Like, right. I know about a lot of guys who played the game. I never saw them play, but I listened to what the other guys, the older guys, would say about them. You know, I'll be in the park. Right. Those guys, they come playing soul in the hole. The reason why I became a teacher, because all those guys, Al Vance, Walkie Smith, Zeke Clemens, Milton Fierce, all those guys were teachers. So mm. they were guys who were leaders in the neighborhood. And so I asked them, man, who are those guys? Oh, they teachers. So that made I, that I mean I wanted to be like them. Great role models. Yep. Yeah. No, so a, a lot, a lot of things, for? a lot of things started first in Brooklyn. I, I always dropped the pearl. Hey, everybody talked about the Rucker tournament. But the first Rucker game was played in Brooklyn at Kingston Park. When Rucker was a park man at Kingston Park, he was a guy from the city. He wanted to go back to the city because that's where, where he was from. But he organized right. a game in Kingston Park. And in that game, he had Larry Brown, Jim Brown, Connie Hawkins. What? Lenny Wilkins. He had, he had all those guys playing, playing in that game in Kingston Park. Jim Brown, Jim Brown? Jim Brown was, he was an All-American basketball player in high school, Jim Brown. He's the probably the greatest player? athlete that oh. ever lived, Jim Brown. The, the football player? The football player, Jim Brown. Yo. What? That's crazy. Yo, Coach, Listen, this is the first it's, time it's I've ever crazy. heard that. Yeah. Listen, well, it, it's true. Look it up. Wow. <laughs> the, the guy who yeah, scored the most know. points in a tournament basketball game at BRC wasn't a really basketball player, but he played in the offseason with the Globe Trials. He came there, he's from Omaha, Nebraska. He came there and played in the tournament and scored 59 points. And he played with the Globe Trials. His name was Bob Gibson. Hell of a player. Wow. Wow. Bob Gibson is, 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 is a Hall of Fame pitcher. The, the, the baseball player? The baseball player. All those guys, they play different sports. Yo, coach. That's amazing. Right now, you are blowing yeah. my mind. Yep, you hey, anything I tell you, you can look it up. Bob Gibson was a bad boy. Wow. He was from Omaha, Nebraska. Some of the best athletes in America came from Omaha, Nebraska. Wow. Yeah, that that that's a black concrete out, out there in Nebraska where, where the blacks live. So. Okay. So did you did you transition from baseball to basketball, or you kept playing yes, baseball? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And you you know, uh, I played on my junior high school team. I made it my senior year. I made the team, and we had a really good team. But the coach never played me in any game. I didn't play not one game, not one second. Wow. 
So we had a big game one day at Pratt playing uh, boys and girls, playing against Pearl in them. So we, we would take our games over to Pratt so everybody could see it. So after the game, we beat them. So after the game, we, we were on our way to the locker room, and Coach Glitzman is on his way to the, to the locker room. And I say to him, Coach Glitzman, come in. He said, who me? I said, yeah, come here. I, I want you to talk to my team, say something to my team. So when I introduced him, I told my kids, this is a guy who had a big influence on my life. I, I learned numerous things about the fundamentals of basketball. He was the last white guy to play for boys high. And his name is Sam Glitzman. He was my, he was my junior high school coach. So after Coach Glitzman spoke to the team, he came to me and asked me, said, why did you say that to those kids? He didn't even remember me. What? He didn't even remember me. I said, Coach, you know something? The important thing is that I remember you. Wow. How, how did that impact you, Coach, when, 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 when he said he didn't remember you? It involved me. That's, that's all my life. That's the story of my life. I know I was good. I know I could play. I tried out for the boys' high team three times. And three times, I got cut. I got cut. Coach cut me. So I, I, I didn't play for boys' high. But I played against the boys' high guys in tournaments. Mel Davis, Booby Green, Jimmy Pearsall. Those are my guys. I played all over. Right. Nobody had to tell me that I was good. I never had a problem with knowing how good I was. I never right. had a problem. Fear wasn't a part of my game. And when I coached, I taught my kids the most important thing. Listen, when we have a game, don't worry about the people who come to see us because that's the most important thing. We ain't got no away games. All our games is home games. For the mere really? fact that they came to see us. So that's what my kids, they, they, I mean, they really perform. Ice, Beetle, Andre, Scurry, uh, KK, uh, Boo Williams. Right, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's, Joe let's go Bean, back. Ben Davenin. Hold on, hold on, Coach. Hold on, Coach, because we, we want to get there. We want to get there because you're rolling off some names, and, and I want to give those guys some time. Uh, so how did you get into coaching? How did I get into coaching? Lester Roberts. Yeah. I was working at St. John's Recreation Center, and – they needed a JV coach at Hamilton. Hamilton was right down the street on Albany Avenue. And right. Lesser told the guys, hey, I got you a JV coach. Right. So they, they, they were thinking, oh, JV coach, that means we got a, so a place to practice because they, they didn't have no gym at that time at, at Hamilton. So we came, <laughs> came over to, the, to St. John's and, and, and we practiced there. After my first year, Kenny Fiedler left Hamilton and became the coach of Bushwick High School. So that made me the head coach. What year was this? 1976. Wow, the year before the blackout. I coached nine years at Alexander Hamilton. My record was 179 and 14. <laughs> So, and Yo, hold on, I always hold on, had at least 20, 24 players on the team because I didn't have hold a JV. Cole, hold so on. When, when hold on, Edward Cole. was a freshman and Gerald Green were freshmen, every day they practiced against the best players in the city. They went against Beetle and Cosell. Have you ever heard of Cosell Brown? Yes. Cosell Brown, when he was a junior in high school and Isaiah was a junior in high school, they were the top two ranked point guards in the country, Isaiah Thomas and Cosell Brown. After Cosell's junior year, he transferred out of Hamilton and went to Oak Hill Academy. And we never heard of him since. Wow. That, that was a bad move for him. He was the best player in New York City. Why would the best player in New York City go to Oak Hill Academy? Right, right. See? And, and all that did was at that particular move on his part, gave Andre Irvin, uh, Beetle Washington, Ice Reynolds, Lionel King. It gave them chance to develop. Ed Davina. Early on, when Ed Davina and Gerald Green were freshmen, they were intimidated by those guys. 
But if you practice against those guys every day, you start to build up your confidence. See, my 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 thing about becoming a better basketball player, you got to play. You know, it's a place in this game for the workout guys. I don't got nothing against the workout guys, but in order to really get better, you got to play. <clears throat> You got to play. Coach, you, call, you call them the workout guys? The guys at the trainers? The trainers. I mean, they got to, listen, don't get me wrong. They got a place in this game. But basketball is a science. So things have to be exact. When the ball is here, this is what we do. Listen, Ice Reynolds, Carrie Scary, were able to go to the NBA and play point guard in the NBA. Ice, Ice and a, a carry. They play guard in the NBA. Why? Because when we did our drills, we did basketball drills. We didn't do no drills for big men. We did drills for basketball players. So wherever you was on the court, wherever you caught the ball, you knew what to do with the ball. That's important. So, so how did all of these players end up at Alexander Hamilton? And, 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 but for all the people who didn't hear him, he said he had 24 guys on his basketball team. And all the years that he's been there, in the nine years he was there, he was 179 and 14. Let that sink in. Well, so, a lot of those guys, know, I, know guys well, I worked at St. John Recreation Center. And I, oh, I was part of Brooklyn, the you. original Brooklyn, USA. Right. So right. I, I didn't tell Ice Reynolds to come to to Hamilton. Ice just came. Right. Gerald just came. I told Ed Davner to come. No, I had Ed Davner since he was eight years old. Hmm. Wow. So that's incredible. Yeah, so and, you know, I'm I, I'm looking at the high school coaches and I look at the amazing job Tiny Morton did at Lincoln. Yes. And, he, he got a lot of guff for what he was doing instead of getting support. What should happen with Tiny, the PSL, they should have they should have made him a master coach and let him teach new coaches. We have a lot of coaches that come in that don't know nothing about other than the basketball being around. That's all they know. Yeah. That's all they know. They play their little 12. They practice. You know, when I was a coach, the best time, the best time of the year was practice. We practice. So when the game came, it was nothing that didn't come up in the game that we didn't practice for. We were ready. We could run something for. And my key to them, I told them, I said, listen, last second shots. Our goal, we don't have to make it. We have to execute the play and get a good shot, whether it go in or not. That was the key. So. Uh, you got 24 guys on the team. How does that work for us playing time? And you have like about seven, eight Division One players. I got, I Along with the best player in the country. I had 12 Division One players. And Lloyd Daniel was my ball boy. Oh, on, on that time team. out, time out, time out, coach. Time out. You had you had 24 guys on your team, and yeah. half of them were Division One players. Yeah. Listen, everybody that's in this room, let that sink in. And who was your ball boy? Lloyd Daniels. Sweet Pete. If anybody had his book, he wrote a book. And, and he, 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 he stayed in his book. He felt as though if Hamilton would have stayed open and he would have been with me, his career would have been different. That was a hell of a compliment. I, I think so, too. Bring the phone down some close week so we can see you. Yep. There you go. There you so, go. That is incredible. I, I used to run so, a basketball camp at Pratt. That's where I, I met I met Charles and Mike at Pratt. All right, we gonna get there. We gonna get there. We gonna get there. We gonna get there. Are we still stuck in the Hamilton days? I, I want to know how was it coaching all of those guys and giving everybody playing time. How did that work? Listen, listen you you play and. You played on good teams, and yes. you know that your guys, when y'all you know, had a team that y'all know y'all was going to beat, right. your coach 
to keep the game close so the coach could keep you in. Right. But no, no coaching. Ice, Beetle, Cosell, Davner, all those kids. If we ain't up by halftime, y'all coming out. Y'all ain't playing no more. So our bench guys play. And this is one of the problems I, I had in my philosophy. A lot of people they couldn't understand this. Here, you on my team. You practice every day. You do all the things I ask you to do. So when it comes time for you to get in the game, I tell you not to score. Hold the ball. Is that fair to you? Right. It's not fair to you. So I used to tell the I used to tell the other coaches. I said, I took my top 12 out the game. You still got your starting five in the game. So that means you didn't give up. You didn't I, give up. I heard it. Bring, the, bring the phone down, coach, because I can't see you. I heard, I heard at, uh, something happened at a, a, a game that y'all played Lafayette. Y'all blew them out, and the coach had some words for you? No, never. Bernie Curzon was my man. Someone someone told me uh, a story. Uh, it wasn't a beef. I think that you uh, blew them out, and um, he Shit, was the player. They beat huh? They were one of the teams that beat us. When we really? went in their gym. Yeah, we went in their gym. No, they had they had everyone in the damn gym open. It was freezing. It was cold as hell in that gym. Wow. So with with the, with the, uh, was a great coach. Where did some of your guys go um, after they left Alexander Hamilton? Well, my biggest disappointment was Darnell Williams. He's one of them Coney Island kids. Oh. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski was recruiting him. He wanted him to go to Army. I wanted him to go to Army. He he thought he, that, that would have made him corny. He wound up mm. going to Texas A&M. But I wanted him to go to, to Army. You know? So, you know, I mean, I, Ed Dabner went to Kentucky. Jerry Reynolds went to LSU. Uh, Lionel King went to Kent State. Nate Sims went to Ohio State. Mm. Ray James went to St. John's. You know, Cosell Brown went to Arizona State, wound up at Arizona State. Gerald Green, of course, went to Seton Hall. So, wow, that's crazy. You know, I always had this theory that um, our New York guys don't do well in the Big Ten or the SEC, right? But when I look back on on ICE, right, and Ed Davida yeah. had a decent career too, but I'm talking about the guys who leave here and making out those situations to go to the next level. Ed, Ed Davida was in the top 15 in scoring at Kentucky. Right. Okay. Okay. And, you, played and, all 15, and, you played all 15 years. I, I mean, all I four years. He had a hell of a TV game. He had a hell of a TV game, I think, in 1982, 83 against Michael Jordan. Yeah, you took that. I was gonna put it up today. Actually, I'm gonna put it up later. Yeah, yeah, Jerry, Jerry was a, a special player. Kids, good, you know, he was a teammate, he was a leader, he was a captain. He didn't, he didn't shun nobody, he embraced all those guys. I even have one of the top comedians in this country on my team, Brooklyn Mike. Really? Yeah. So with Brooklyn Mike, see, this is what I did with, 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 with ninth graders. I get them, I said, listen, you be my manager for two years, and then I'll put you on the team for your junior and senior year. I'll put you on the team for your junior and senior year. So those guys, they was in the game. They, they got in games. You know, they felt a part of it. And Brooklyn Mike is an amazing comedian. Oh, yeah. Very, very funny. He's definitely a legend in New York City. Uh, and Nate Sims retired from the Army as a colonel, a brigadier colonel. Mm -mm -mm. So did, yeah. did, do you think uh, during that time um, when you guys was winning uh, that the PSCL had something against you and, and the Alexander yeah, yeah, yeah. One year, one year, they, one year, listen, I don't cry about spilled milk, but one year they cheated us. The year that Mickens won the championship, they didn't like Mickens, but they liked me less. Because mm. we played them, play up the Barrel Championship, 
at Pratt. Richie Gordon, who was their leading scorer, their leading player, fouled out the game at the beginning of the third quarter. We were the home book. Our book had him for five fouls. Jack Kreisman, who ran the PSAL, he was doing the game. And he let Richie Gordon stay in the game. Wow. I mean, they don't like Mickens, but they, they like me less. You know why they like me less? Because I was community-based. I was based in the community. If you ever had an opportunity to go to the LIU games, you saw everybody in, 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 in the basketball community. I was there. The I was there, definitely. Yep. From, all, from all over the city. And one of the things was my goal was to make downtown Brooklyn a part of the LIU campus. So those kids would feel, you know, good about good about being there. And they did. So I mean so, you know, it was a great opportunity. You know, I, I think about, you know, all the coaches who get celebrated in New York City. Um, you know, the coach from Christy King, Jack Curran, uh, my coach, uh, and a lot of other coaches, uh, the coach from Tilden Rock, and, you know, but you guys, as far as everyone else, in the community, you guys' names are big, but they don't really talk about you, Mickens, and, that, not, and now it's tiny. Listen, let me tell you something. My, my, my greatest, my greatest accomplishment is when a guy like Tiny and Mo Hicks, they recognize me. They show me the love. Love coming from them means something to me. All, all those other guys, it don't mean nothing because That's I know right. they, they walk the path that I walk. That's I right. mean, Mo Hicks, he's the, he's the first coach to win a PSAL championship and a Catholic school championship. Mm -hmm. He coached Brad Rice and he coached Rice and had great players at Rice. And, and, and look how they did him. He went to St. John's and they went all around and wouldn't give him a job. Yeah. I, I wanted Tiny to stay at Seton Hall because I know he was going to get a head job. But it, it just wasn't in him. He, he couldn't hold it. Now, Tiny is an amazing coach. What he's yes. done, yes, how he's recruited, and his relationship with players, you you go up and down the, the recruiting list, and where are all the Division One players at? You might get one here, one there, but they all at Lincoln. They all yeah. at Lincoln. We we had we had one high school, public high school, that won three straight championships, and not one Division One player. And they are they are major. They were a major program, not one. What team is that? I don't want to say it. Oh, I get it. I know now. Yeah, listen. Because I, I, got, I, I, have the I, utmost, said, I got, I got, I have the utmost respect for the coach. I know the work no. that they put in. But here's the deal, too, coach. Right? Yeah. That's one of the. That's one of the, uh, my biggest problems with these coaches out here. You know that they're not making sure that these kids are doing what they need to do in the classroom. Boss, you can't hold their hand. But you can do everything in your power and structure your your program in a way to where your kids succeed. Like for instance, you know, Rob Phelps and the coach at Banneker, uh, their teams have to have an 80 average. Mm -hmm. Right? So there's a so there's a, a standard, right? Now, of, of course, we know there's politics in the classrooms, but if we prepare our kids, get them some mentors. And help to help these kids to see we can change this thing around. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, you to say it, it, it's it's crazy. So you know, I've I've had coaches that went on. Right, <laughs> I used to coach girls basketball too. I was the head coach at Alexander Hamilton High School, and the head coach for women's basketball at Hunter College at the same time. Only difference is wow. Hunter College played and practice at night. I won the first Cooney Championship coaching at Hunter College. I had some great players. My players went on, graduated, became teachers, became coaches. Mm. You know? That's great. That's awesome. So, so you know, I, now, anytime I can, uh, I can uplift 
Tani Dwayne Morton, I'm I'm right there. I'm right there. You know, uh, if he if if he want he if he wanted to be David Ruffin, I wouldn't mind being background singer Temptation for him. Right. Because that's right. the work that he put it. He was that serious. When kids came to my school, I met with their parents. All that NBA stuff, this, that, and the other, I would tell them, I said, listen, we're going to make an assessment of where your son's talent falls in. If I feel as though that ain't happening, I mean, all the kids want to go to Notre Dame, North Carolina, but they ain't getting no information like that. They get a Division right. II school, this and other. I send them back to the Division II school, and I tell them, <laughs> we're interested. We're interested. Later for, you know, that I'm not interested in. If they ain't coming for you, they ain't coming for you. Right. So so that's what I do. I, I tell the parents. I said, I'm going to handle this recruiting, and you're going to be a part of the recruiting. I remember in Kentucky, Kentucky recruited Ed Dabner. Ed Dabner wasn't at Hamilton. He spent his senior year at Boys and Girls High School. Yeah, yeah. So Coach, Coach Brown wanted to handle his recruiting. I said, no, I'm handling it. I'm having so Joe B. Hall called up to New York and he said, man, one of the reasons why we don't recruit New York players is because we don't know who we have to go and see, who we got to talk to. And I told him, I said, listen, Ed Dabner, you talking to the right guy right now. So I made Joe B. Hall come up to St. John's Recreation Center, came by my office. I took him to the gym. The gym was full of people. He wanted to know what those people was there for. I said, they're there for you. They see you on TV. Now, I want you to give them some words of encouragement. Ed Dabner lived on Utica Avenue, two blocks away. So when we came out, Joby wanted to get a cab. I said, no, we walking. I walked him through the neighborhood. And people were saying, Joby, Joby. He thought I set it up. But I had to right, tell him, I said, right. Coach, we got TVs. That's and right. basketball's out. We got TVs. So, and Edward, Edward had a great, great career there. Great career. So, yeah, yeah. He he beat us um, in the Brooklyn Championship my freshman year. You know, the fact that he had the ball and came down and shot that shot, and the whole Lincoln starting five jumped that bug out. And it was an air ball, and Robert Gilmore was right under the rim and tapped it in. Oh, God and bless you, sir. Yes, R.I.P. Robert Gilmore. You know, and then that next year, after all those guys left, Damari Riddick, Kenny Parker, Carlton Owens, Damari Riddick was one of my Darren kids. Woodbury. You know? Excuse me? Damari Riddick was one of my kids. He played on the youth yeah? games for me. Yeah, me and wow. were tight. Yeah, I spoke, to, I spoke to Damari the other day. Go and get him he, on he here. Told me, he, told me, he told me, he said, Coach, why you wait so long to be the LIU coach? Because he, he had a good career, right. he, he had a good career at Fairleigh Dickinson. Yeah, yeah. So how come you didn't get the job at Boys and Girls instead of Paul Brown? Frank Frank, Frank Mickens. Frank Mickens didn't like me. Listen, Frank Mickens gave the job to Ruth Lovelace. Ruth Lovelace had never coached a basketball game. She was right. a community coach. She was nothing. She wasn't interested in coaching. She wasn't a JV coach or nothing. Mickens gave her the job at Boys and Girls and gave another teacher the job, gave a, a male the job as the girls' basketball coach. You would think it would have been the opposite, but Mickens, no, he couldn't right. survive doing that. But I'm happy for all that Ruth Lovelace has accomplished at Boys and Girls. Yes, I mean, yes. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, her, her Mickens, that's one of the things. Boys High was a national job. But they did on-the-job tournament. Mickens, when he became the coach of Boys and Girls, was terrible. Really? But, bring, the, bring the phone down, Coach. Bring the phone down. I see the ceiling. Yeah. Mickens was terrible. But <laughs> he taught himself oh, to become a good coach. Think. I thought he. I thought he was. I thought he was. I thought he was a very good coach. I, I never. I only saw him coach at the, in, in the Empire State game. He became, oh, he became a great coach. Okay. Okay. He became okay. a great coach. You know how some guys get the job and they just got it. They don't put right. the work in. He put right. the work in. 
And this this is what I did. And this allowed me to get my, my kids in Division Two and Division Three schools. This is the hardest work I ever did in my life. I used to work the basketball camps in the summer. I worked the basketball camps. Why? Because I met the coaches. I met Division Three coaches, Division Two coaches. I met them, and they knew who I was. So if I pick the phone up and call them, say, yo, this is Ray Hassins. I got a kid for you, brother. They know me. They know my work. They work with me in camp. So mm. that's how I got a lot of my kids in Division Three schools. So after all of your success you had at Alexander Hamilton, how many championships did you guys win there? I won one championship, five borough, five borough championships. This one, so one in nineteen ninety one. After that, why why people were hesitant to give you a job after that in another high school? Because you know, a lot of a lot of people used to say because I made the kids dress up in shirts and ties and come to the game, be presentable. They said I was a black Muslim. Wow. <laughs> So and, I've seen the, and I've seen that, and I've seen the, a picture of your kids all dressed up, coach. So that's you let, definitely speaking facts. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. We were playing in the Christmas tournament up at City College. Some kids robbed some black kids robbed some white people on the train. And at at a uh, Forty uh, Second Street, the cops came on the train. And they took all the black kids off, off the train except my kids because they had shirts and ties. Only they took one of my kids who didn't have a shirt and tie. They took his ass. You know that's that seemed like an insignificant thing, but it's a message. You know, so. Coach, I, I have a, a similar experience myself. Uh, one day I was going to the studio with some friends of mine, and. As we was walking past some guys, one of my friends passed somebody on the corner a CD of his music. The, guy, the cops thought he was passing off drugs. So when we got to the corner, the cops pulled, pulled us over and asked us to, you know, to stand still. He asked two of my friends to get against the wall. <clears throat> he didn't say anything to me. So as the cop is asking uh, my two friends for their ID, one of my friends is saying, you know, I'm not trying to get my friend in trouble, but why you only pulled us, pulled us two over? He said, give me your IDs. And mm -hmm. as he was looking at the IDs, he saw the age, he said, yo, y'all need to stop dressing the way you're dressing because y'all dressing like the dudes we're looking at. And I, and I had a, a, a regular polo shirt like I have on now, uh, some cardigan mm -hmm. shorts, and I had a laptop with a briefcase. So I... Look, I, I, I don't try to do my best to assimilate, but I try to do my best not to look like the people who the, the bad guys are looking for, or the cops are looking for. You know what I'm saying? You saw my so games. You, I, saw how, you, saw how, you saw how I dress, right? Look, game. always sharp. Always. Because I'm modeling for my kids. You know, I, I came from Madison Street. I used to shoot crap, play cards. I used to do all that on the street. But when I became a coach at Hamilton, I stopped all that. Because I don't want my kids to see me out there doing that. How am I tell them? Right. So, so I stopped that. Mm. Wow. So I, you know, I've heard you know stories about you know people saying things like you know uh, after Alexander Hamilton, coaches blackballed and all those things, and people and me growing up and knowing you for practically all my life. Uh, know what kind of man you uh, were, what kind of father you were, what kind of coach and educator you were. Your reputation speaks for itself and, and the impact that you had on guys like myself and thousands of other kids that grew up in the neighborhood, right? Listen, so now... A lot, a lot of kids, a lot of people never took the time to know me. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you know people look from afar and, and try to and try to judge the photo or try to judge the person, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So how did you move on to Fez Academy? Uh, when I came, when I when uh 
think when I came back from from down south, Joel had Fez Academy. He needed a coach. He came to me and asked me to coach. And I told him, I said, listen, Joel, let me tell you something. I'm a coach and I coach. I know you ain't going to pay me my money that you owe. You ain't going to pay me. <laughs> I said, but I'm a coach. To this day, right. Joel ain't paid me shit. <laughs> <laughs> I coach, and I made a lot of good relationships with those kids. Yeah, you coached uh, two of my uh, former teammates on Madison Square Broncos, Mark Brown and uh, Anthony Duke Joseph. Oh, man, hey, the one, two punch, oh, my God. Oh, man. People, I tell people to this day, those two of the, two of the best players I ever played with, right? Did, and they complement each other so well. You know, mm -hmm. I always Did thought Mark Brown was great, but Juice, Juice reminded me so much of Michael Jordan. Yeah. But listen, I made my team, they didn't have a lot of money at sure for trainers and all that. So I made my team run cross country. Mm. You know who wow. finished second in the, in, the, in the CIAA in cross country? Who's that? Fucking Juice. Juice. Yeah. He played second in the, in, the, in the champions. He was an incredible athlete. Listen, people in the room, Anthony Juice Joseph, I seen him put it on some of the best players in the country, and no coach would touch him for some reason. No coaches, like, I've seen them put it on everyone, everyone that we played at AAU across the country. Mm -hmm. And he could play defense. Yeah, he had, a good, he had a good career overseas. Yeah. Okay, okay. So he did play overseas, okay, after that. Yeah, he, he played in London. How did you guys do it um, at Shore University? I had, I had, uh, 14 freshmen, one, one, one sophomore. And we finished 15 and 14. We led the nation in scoring. Wow. We led the how nation long, in scoring. How long did you stay there? This one year, because they, they, they kept cutting my salary. Listen, the uh, uh, USA Today writer came to see the Duke Carolina game in, 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 in Durham. And he saw all the scores that we we putting up. We averaging over 100 points a game. He he you know what he said to me. He said, "Fuck that game. I'm coming to see what y'all doing." We played mm -hmm. North Carolina Central. We beat them in triple overtime, one 143 to 139. Wow. And so, uh, 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 let's go back to Feds. How come they closed down Feds Academy? Because Feds was a charter school. It was one of the first charter schools. Oh, and, that it, it definitely was. It definitely was. And and okay. uh, and they put Joel out of uh, 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 Betsy Head. Okay. Um, Rick Combs asks, what kind of relationship did you have with Coach Granby and Andrew Jackson? Uh, I try to respect everybody, but not not really good. He. he Grand, Granby, uh, when we beat them for the city championship, and I went to shake his hand, he knocked my hand away. What? So y'all, okay, what? so y'all beat Andrew Jackson in 81. Yeah, yeah, we beat them. And he didn't shake your hand? What? He knocked my hand he did away. Out there, he did out there, Thomas? What? Hey, excuse me? I said he did out there, Thomas. Now look. This this is for my player. Yeah. He, my man, God bless you. So you know, what, you know what I told him? You know what I told him? I, I said, man, this is too important moment. But I should beat your motherfucking ass right here on this court. <laughs> Boy, that he got he got he got away from me like I had two guns. Wow. Yo. See, because he was he was he was a shit in Queens. Every year had good teams, good teams, good teams. <laughs> and yeah. always going to play off blowing it. I mean, he oh, had some yeah. great team. He had the, I mean, he was, Andrew Jackson was the boy's high Clinton of, 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 of Queens. Mm. That great team, great players. I say the same thing about Paul Brown. I used to say the same thing about Paul Brown. Paul Brown had great teams, could win the championship. Yeah, listen, when we played them at Pratt, the game where I told you where my junior high school coach came, 
Yes. We will. <laughs> We were we were winning by one, and he had poor he had he had he had uh, Pearl something like five seconds. He had Pearl take the ball out. What? Yeah, he took the ball out. Pearl uh uh uh, uh Pearl inbounded to Elmer Anderson. I double teamed him, and I triple teamed Pearl, and Andre Irving got the steal. Hold on. He let Pearl take the... Pearl took the ball out of him. Yeah. Wow. And Boys High has some great teams. Even the year when we lost to them as a sophomore, freshman and a sophomore, they could have easily won the city. They had the, some of the best big men in the city, and they had some great guards. Let me make you understand this. Boys and Girls High School had citywide zoning. You could live anywhere in the city and go there. They recruited from 16 housing projects in Brooklyn. They had 5,000 students. So what's going to stop them from always having good players? That's crazy. How was your relationship now, with Bobby Hartstein, my coach? It, it, I had a good relationship. I, I found Bobby Hartstein coaching in junior high school. Him and Jack Rangel, we, we were good friends. Really? Yeah. But I used to. I used to always tell me he's a fucking liar, though. Who? Because I used to always tell me he's a fucking liar. Because he said he Bobby didn't Hartstein? recruit. Yeah, he, he said he didn't recruit. Yeah, I know you don't recruit. You got motherfuckers out there recruiting for you. So what's the difference? But me and him are great friends to this day. You hear that? To yeah, this yeah, day, I love Bobby Hartstein. That. Yeah, he I said that. Bobby. He said that. He said that. I spoke to him the other day. He definitely said that. Back. Yeah. I had good yeah. relationship with him when I coached. Um, who else? I, I, put Larry Larry Majors at Hamilton. I put Larry Majors at Hamilton. How was that? He was a good, he was I, a good coach. Yeah. And... and you know, I used to teach basketball officiating. You know that, right? For 17 really? years. Yeah, I, 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 I taught the, uh, the Iable class for 17 years. So all them guys, Brim and all those guys, they came from my class. Archie Lane, Dennis Miller, all those guys, they, they came from my, the class that I taught at St. John's Recreation Center. Wow. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely going to get it to, to the referee later on. Um... We have, uh, who's this? Booth? Who's that? Booth Basketball. Booth Basketball said, tell Coach Booth is waiting for the call for the documentary. All right, give him my number, Chef. Huh? Give him, give him my number. Oh, oh, what? oh, you talking about, uh, what's called the Booth? Craig Booth. Right, right, right. Ball side middle. Right. Ball side middle, Booth. Yeah, he, he's he's on here now, so I guess DM him, all right, so we can get through yeah. this. Yeah, all right. I, I, um, I, I love it. Yeah. When uh um my daughter moved down to Maryland, and he was running the tournament, and she came down there, and volunteered to do the scores for her. Okay. So at first he first you know he didn't know the he didn't know the connection or anything. So finally he asked and says, "You know Ray Haskins?" So yeah, that's my father. <laughs> she went to Georgetown, yeah. Who was that? Who's that? Daphne? No, no, Daphne, my oldest daughter. Okay, okay, okay. Daphne went to Shaw, but she wouldn't go to class. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so okay, now you you out of Shaw, right? Yeah. And you come back to up to New York. How do you get the Long Island University job? Well, uh, Bernadette Walker, you know they 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 was having they was they was having problems. The coach was having problems. He had a gambling problem, and they didn't have no blacks on their staff. So the dean of students with Bernadette Walker, Andy Walker's sister, she knew me. She knew Hank Carter. She asked Hank Carter. She told Hank Carter she needed a she needed a, a assistant coach. So, in 1995, that's when Ruth's job opened up at Boys and Girls. I was going to fight Ruth for that job, but the job opened up at 
LIU. So I said, fuck it. I'm, I'm just going to go see where this takes me. And I, I, I went to LIU. And I was there for a year. And then, in, then the next year, they fired Lizzo. And Lizzo recommended me for the job. I got the job. Mm. And how long did you stay there? Uh, four years. Liz, Lizzo was a good guy. But one of the things I, I realized when I went to LIU, not one kid on the team was from Brooklyn. Wow, you right about that. Yeah. Man, I had some I had some hell of a conversations with guys. Like, I really don't know Jamal Tinsley. Jamal Tinsley knows who I am. I know who he right. is. Okay. Jamal Tinsley came up to me one day. He saw me in the park and he said, I want to thank you. I said, You want to thank me? He said, Yeah, I owe a lot to you. So, you know, <laughs> I, I keep it real. I said, What the fuck you owe me? And he said, uh, what you did for Charles. When I saw that happening for Charles, I know it could happen for me. That's what he told me. Wow. That's wow. a hell of a compliment. He had, to, he had to say that. That's a hell of a compliment. Listen, I watched, I watched both Mike Campbell and Charles grow up. Um, I, I was very close with Mike Campbell um, and his prog progress, you know, helping him out. Uh, when he was younger, and watching Charles come to Breeboy and playing the music league, and him and his brother Lamont dominate, how was it like mm -hmm. coaching those two? Oh, it was no problem. You know, <laughs> I like I had Charles as a kid. I, I didn't have a problem. You know what the people at LIU used to tell me? If you want to, if you want to throw Charles off the team, we'll back you. They they even had my assistant saying that. <laughs> And I said, I brought my assistants together. I said, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you feeding into that bullshit? What, what did Charles do that defies us? Anything we ask Charles to do, he do. Because they don't right. like him. What, what that mean? Come on. Charles is a brilliant guy, man. That's right. Char Charles and, and Mike were friends with my daughters. Yeah, you know they, six tough daughters. as nails. Tough as nails. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys went to the uh, NCAA championship, I mean, the NCAA tournament two years in a row? We went to the NCAA and NIT. NCAA the first year, the NIT the second year. And okay. we, we Who did you lose to the we second played, year? We played, we played Dayton at Dayton. Yeah, we, we so, played them as well in the, in the NIT. So at halftime, Charles had four points. On the way to the locker room, the the people at Dayton were saying, overrated, overrated. You know, he dropped 45 the second half. They beat us in triple overtime. Wow. 45 we, in the second had, half? Yeah, 45. He was raining. And then he started talking to the shit coach. Coach, this one from you. 45 feet out. Wow. 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 <laughs> Oh, 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 he could talk shit and back it up. One of the best at oh, yeah. that. Yeah, I love Charles. Man. You know, I, so, I had great relationships with my players. Yeah. Mike yeah. Irvin. I, I Mike Irvin became a teacher. Uh, he was having some problems. He had a problem. And he was applying for the job as a teacher. I said, Mike, I said, whatever you do when you apply for the job, tell the truth. Don't leave nothing out. If you don't, if you leave, that's the only way they they can fire you or not hire you. If you tell the truth, then they gotta hire you. My government worked work, work in twenty eight years. Department of Ed as a teacher. Yeah, that's my guy. That's my guy. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, he, he he graduated from Shore University. Okay. When they'll graduate from Shore University? A lot of opportunities. Brooklyn Mike graduated from Shore University. Hmm. Wow. So, who are some of the coaches? You know, I, I know you said you, you are Amaya Tiny. Um, who are some of the other coaches that you admire today that coach high school basketball? That coach today? Yes. I I, I love Will Jackson. Yeah, I had him on I, the I, other night. Yeah, I had him I, on I, the I other night. Will. I love Will Jackson. Him, I like him, and um, 
it's, it's not that many really coaches that really get there and put the work in. You know, I like the Juan McMillan. I love the Juan McMillan. He's at Nazareth, right? Uh, I don't know. He's not there no more. He's with one of them programs now. Okay, okay. You know, you know, I love Tiny and Mo Hicks, uh, Dwayne Mitchell. See, the private schools and the charter schools have the advantage over the public schools because they can hire anybody to be a coach. Right. You got to be a teacher to be a coach in the board of ed, and, right. and you, you actually got teachers that they they coach their teams. They could play twenty two games. All they play is ten or twelve games, and get paid for it, and that's it. Wow. I don't think that's fair. Right. And then they'll get mad because a guy like Tiny got all these practices. Someone like Ruth got all these practices. Mm. Coach, we're going to come back, all right? We're gonna, I'm going to cut off, and we're going to come right back, all right? So click back on me.